Good morning. Good morning, family. How we doing, Carimed family? How we doing, pharmacy family? Okay, so that was the, that was the warm-up. We'll do some more at the end of the presentation. So all who forgot their dancing shoes can get a chance to put it on now. I want to acknowledge all my colleagues, Mr. Dennis Grant, Mr. Christian, thank you so much, Mr. Everton Anderson, my colleagues, Dr. Telma Nelson, Dr. Magdalia, McDaniel, Dr. Paul Scott, other Tracy, and all who are attending this morning. Thank you for being here. So my task is really to talk about the state of pharmacy and where we expect to go. I look at a brief historical view of pharmacy practice and determine if we have progressed. We have heard some things happening, are we progressing or are we regressing? To look at some of the current paradigms which Mr. Everton so eloquently addressed some of them earlier on, and to review what are our expectations, what do we look for in the future? Now, when I first was introduced to pharmacy, my father told me, um, you know, you're 17 year old and you're thinking about what can you do as a profession? So we had this druggist, and it wasn't a pharmacist in those days, it was a druggist, was, look, was living in front of me, and my father said to me, so why don't you do, become a druggist? So I said, me? Now in those days, most of the persons who were practicing had the appearance of, you know, these elderly, stern-looking gentleman. And this young girl, it didn't fall too well with me. Anyway, I, um, I listened to the wise words of my father, and here I am. So in those days, we didn't have the drugs that are prepared for us. We had to start from scratch. So these were bottles that you see on display now were typical of a pharmacy in those days. And of course, we also have to look at what is happening in this room, right here in this room. We have several generations. We look at persons who were born before 1945, and we call them in terms of technology. We are looking at where pharmacy is going and what are the things that are going to be utilized. Usually persons over who were born before 1945, according to the generational um, classifications, they are termed as the silent generation. Then you have the, bo the boomers, and the boomers usually tend to be a little bit more adaptive, and we go right down to Generation Z, which is post-1997, and I mean, they don't, they don't know what paper is. They don't use that. So we are looking at developments in terms of how is it going to affect us. The, the persons born, what we call the silent generations, they are mostly disengaged. They are not really interested in technology. Whereas the younger ones, the generation Z and the millennials, like you, most of us in this group here, they are into technology. Everything is done. You, you say in church, you say pull out the Bibles and all the phones would come out. So the, the adaptations, whatever adaptations that we are seeing in our profession will be affected by the technology. So the Z generation, when you say a tablet, it's a different interpretation to the boomers, totally different. So what, where are we coming from in terms of pharmacy per se? We look at what we were called. We were called druggists. We are now called pharmacists. 
right? We had persons who were very significant, made significant contributions to the development of pharmacy right here in Jamaica. And we can think of names such as Mr. Golden, Vernon, Robinson, etc. And in the 20th century, the whole profession was based on the product. We were strong on compounding. And um, the skill of the pharmacist was in being able to create these medications from the raw product. There was absolutely no real demand for pharmacists to be engaged in, in um, following patients and educating patients from a scientific point of view. However, um, as we drug adverse drug reactions and things started happening, there was definitely a need for pharmacy to be transformed from a manual, compound, object-based profession to one where the patient is being considered. So there are legal implications um, that came into place and so the development of the pharmaceutical industry. There was an explosion because FDA required scientific research and clinical trials, and all of these companies came on board. And so you had education was also need, needed to change. So we moved from a system where we were apprentices to a, 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 a position where we are now um, in, in get receiving a formal education and of course the pharmaceutical society of jamaica they were in, um, instrumental in moving from the moving pharmacy profession from the apprentices to the diploma um, certification and then on to a formalized three-year program in the united states the same thing occurred you had the move from the three-year program to a full um, course ending with a doctor of pharmacy. And just to say here that for pharmacists who were apprentices and pharmacists who have a diploma, the council registers those pharmacists, they, um, they were grandfathered into the system. However, what is happening now is that for pharmacists who have a diploma where the minimum qualification for registration is now a degree, right? Uh, and so those pharmacists must ensure that they maintain their registration with the pharmacy council. Because if you fall off, you would now have to go back to the university and get upgraded to a family. So that is just a note that I am mentioning. So critical knowledge of drug interactions and so caused the profession. Pharmacokinetics of drugs and so became important. And so the profession moved and education had to move with the profession. So we consider, are we, the, the, the separation of the profession, the changes to education, the emphasis on safe and effective medication, our increased knowledge of compounding, and the use of natural and local remedies. When you take that as a whole, would you consider that the profession has regressed, or are we progressing? And when I look at it, I would say it's a good thing, the separation of the profession. The improved education is an excellent thing, and the emphasis on safe and effective medica medications is significant. However, we have lost some of our compounding skills, and that's an area I think that we need to refocus on. Now, the use of natural and local remedies, that's a way. It's been weighed because some persons still believe that anything that is growing naturally must be good. And we do know from our kinetics and our study studies the adverse effects that are associated. However, there is a good point to the use of um, pharmacists using innovation to develop the medicines from natural sources. And so that's an area of, of demand. Now, the next point I want to look at is what is the current paradigm and which the extent to which it is effective and what are the modalities? Are there going to be changes to the um, current system? So what are the um, trends? 
Mr. Anderson mentioned some, but listen, the burden of chronic disease and aging, the same medications and improvement in healthcare has caused us to live much longer, right? So there is a burden on healthcare. In the um, developing countries, cost containment, there's a constraint. We have, luckily we have a um, NHF, very proactive and innovative, but it's still a cost. Antibiotic, antimicrobial resistance is increasing, right? Drugs that were effective a couple of years ago, it's now a major issue, right? And it is suggested by the um, IMS Institute that by 2050, more people will die from drug-resistant infections than that should be cancer, I'm sorry. The risk of pandemics are also higher, right? Shortage of healthcare professionals. We can't train enough persons in Jamaica. Pharmacists, um, nurses, doctors, they are migrating. Increased focus is now on the prevention, right? And that is a very good thing. Increased expectations. Patients are demanding. They demand better health care, and they are more informed as well. So even this week, a patient came to me with a prescription, and she said, okay, um, as, after I had given her everything, she said, okay, I'm going home to Google now to see if what you said was correct, right? So that is a fact of life. And they Google what the doctor says, they Google what the pharmacist says, they do the Google. Dr. Google is very active. Right? The rise of technologies. I mean, I am so excited. Give NHF a clap that we are going to be getting innovation from our final year students. It's a need, it's a niche market, it's an area of growth, right? However, some persons still think that we, okay, so Jamaica now has two universities doing a, the doctorate in pharmacy. Right? And persons are saying they are not feeling the effect of the PharmD. That's a, that's a consideration. Right? Technology, how we apply technology, it could be disruptive and it could be beneficial. But still, 70 to 80 percent of the work done by pharmacists is actually involving just filling prescriptions. Right? Amazon, you heard that Amazon wants to enter into pharmacy business? Everybody's quaking because what is Amazon good at? Technology, efficiency, organizations, right? Will we still need a pharmacist to check medications before Amazon sends it out? How is it going to occur, right? Will the law maintain protection of the role of the pharmacist? And if so, for how long? How long will it happen? But guess what? Everybody thinks that pharmacists can do everything. And I'm going to prove that pharmacists can do everything this morning. So I'm going to ask you to put out your right foot. Everyone, no, I saw this table to the front, they promised me that everything I tell them to do, they are going to do. So now is the time. Put out your right foot and make a circle, right? Everybody circling? Okay, so while you are circling now, use your right hand and make the letter six. Now pharmacists can do everything. <laughs> Did it work? What happened? Did, when you were doing the anti lies and you made the letter six, what happened? Everything came into one. Okay, so pharmacists can't do everything. You have to specialize, you have to determine what you are going to choose to do. Okay, we can't do everything. All right, so Mr. Anderson busts on me, right? Because I came here to tell you that the Pharmaceutical Society of Jamaica has been working assiduously to get insurance companies on board with paying pharmacists for the services we provide, namely through medication therapy management. Give yourself a clap again, man. <laughs> Listen to me. Listen to me. This slide, I hope you've seen this slide. When we did our 
research in order to, pre to present the information to SAGICOR and um, NHF, etc. We found that of the few pharmacists we looked at, 2,700 cases of medication therapy reviews were documented. Patient medical records, 2,703. Uh, medication action plans, 2,646. Now, they were not called that, but when we looked at it, the information that was documented showed that these were already being done, and pharmacists don't get a cent for it. We want justice. We want justice. We want justice. Okay? So... The PSJ and NHF was able, as Mr. Anderson said, to um, come together to do a pilot MTM project. And we have gotten um, approval, funding has been granted, and you will get more information on what is happening there. Then you have the pharmacists as prescribers. No, pharmacists already, through the pharmacy council, all list two drugs are under the management of pharmacists. And we are intending to increase the number of drugs that pharmacists can dispense from after reviewing a patient, okay? We, worldwide pharmacists are moving towards um, prescribing. However, our laws have to be changed and we have to go through some things before we get to that. However, we already have the ability to prescribe certain medications, all the list two. So please, pharmacists, do not allow anyone else to usurp that authority. We also have the mention of e-prescribing, and I am here to say that um, Mr. Douglas Holtzhall, that's an article that he wrote, the need for us to get on board. And yes, we are in fact on board. The Pharmaceutical Society of Jamaica, sorry, the Pharmacy Council of Jamaica has presented a, a paper to the Minister Tufton. He has asked a, a special committee to be set up, which is already set up, and we are um, doing the terms of reference so that the committee can come up. The issue is data protection and securing patients' information. So we are, uh, and we reviewed what is happening around the world, some of the issues, and we are attempting so that when we roll out, we don't have to pull it back because of any um, issue. We also have the concerns that are frequently raised with the dispensing from the doctor's offices. Who is handling, people ask, who is handling the, 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 the medications? Who is actually handing out? What type of counseling? Is there a move away from separation of the profession? What about storage conditions? Should these doctors who dispense be under the same regulation as a pharmacy in terms of storage of drugs and accounting? What about the counterfeit trade? How can we avoid that um, infiltrating into the system? So these are issues that are present currently with us, right? Again, um, the nurses have asked for prescriptive rights as well, and that's another issue. A committee has been appointed by the minister um, a pharmacist has been asked to sit on it, and we are asking all of you, I know you have your concerns, whatever it is, to so please send it to PSJ and it will be sent to the, the minister. So the final thing that I'd like to look at is where we are going. We have looked at what was, we have looked at the current. So where are we going? Well, vision, vision 2030, which was conceptualized in... Uh, um, 2005, launched in 2009, was so that we, the element for healthcare was to provide quality and timely healthcare for the mental, physical, and emotional well-being of our people. So in order for us to meet that vision, we have to look at direct patient care services from a pharmacy point of view. It matters that pharmacists should be reimbursed for the services that we are 
arm giving, direct services, because it's not the, remember we have moved away from the product to the patient, and currently we are not being paid for services to the patient, right? Direct patient care services will unprecedented impact the 21st century. Thank you, Mr. Anderson, again, for saying it even before me. So therefore, it means that we must clearly identify the patient as the primary beneficiary of our profession. And if we are serving the patient, we must also go beyond what the patient expects. Okay, so when the patient comes to your pharmacy and they are coming to fill a prescription, when they leave, they should have information. They should have a plan of action of how they will improve from where they are to where they want to be. It means that we have to go beyond the expected, right? And to do that, we have to build a sound foundation Education is important, and again, with the um, education improvement in education that we are seeing, we are con I, I, am, I am at least con con confident that we are building a sustainable practice that will allow us to implement, right? We also must understand that we cannot stop with that degree that we have in our hand. We have to go after training and be certified Become specialists in your areas. Don't try to do everything. Remember that exercise we did a while ago? We cannot do everything, all right? And we have to leverage technology, right? It means that we have to use well-trained technicians to assist us. And if we, if we cannot safely um, this, um, get patients the medications, then we cannot provide a high level of clinical care. So we also want to say, where are areas? Certification doesn't mean to say that you have to go back. You, okay, for example, you have a bee farm. Certification doesn't mean that you have to go back and do a farm day. You can get certified in nutrition. Nutrition is a big part of what we do. Confidence building is a big part. Persons, I see persons calling themselves influencers, right? Health influencers. And they are talking about medicines and they have no clue. But guess what? They have confidence and they go and they put it out there. And because persons are so receptive, right? They do so well, and the pharmacist, with all the knowledge, sitting down, waiting for the patient to come to them. No, we have to project ourselves. And right now, I want to big up one of my colleagues from Mrs. Maury Ellis. She is constantly sending out these short video clips and talking to her patients. We can do it, okay? It doesn't take much. All it needs is a phone. All right? So specialist pharmacist doesn't mean to say that you have to go and do a PharmD. Yes, you can do cardiology and oncology. And my friend, Nucleus um, Pharmacy there, who is a pioneer. We have pioneers, right? Infectious disease and critical care, nutritional support, ambulatory care, immunizers. Do you know that we have pharmacists know, and this is something that we have to agitate for, because we have, in, in preventative care is where we are going, and we have pharmacists who are now qualified to give immunizations, and the law doesn't allow us, so we need to agitate and we need to get this thing going, right? Pediatrics and geriatrics, all sterile, compounding, right? Our um, cannabis, the cannabis industry, another area where pharmacists can blow up. One of our pharmacists is into making candles and these, um, these health, these skin products, right? And they are out there, but we need to see that this is an avenue that we as pharmacists can actually take. So what is the future? Look at pharmacists as a healthcare center hub based on our strengths, right? 
we have proximity. We are accessible to our patients. We are, we are integrated into the healthcare system. We are in touch with all, with all different areas of the healthcare. Sometimes we are the only healthcare personnel that knows everything about the patient, right? And the patient in turn trusts us. So that cycle can be used for our benefit. We are providers of tailored solutions. We do it primarily through medicines, but we do others, other things, right? We are into education, so we can educate our, our patients and we can do health care promotion. And I mentioned about the health coaching. I want to see more pharmacists putting on the title of health coach, right? So that our patients can see the benefit of our training in a more tangible way. And so look at this. This is an integrated community health hub. The medical doctor is there, but, and they are involved in the diagnostics, and if a prescription is needed, medical care and follow-up. There are other healthcare professionals that would be impacting. The pharmacists, on the other hand, right? We are there, we can triage. So we do short-term treatment, validate prescriptions, we take pre preventative me measures, we do healthcare education, and we provide these services in order so that the patients can get optimum outcomes. If the patient comes to the pharmacy and needs to be recommended, we send them to the medical care, right? Or we may send them to a physiotherapist, right, based on what we have seen. So we are part of a health talk hub, and that hub is where the future is in pharmacy. We have to get on board, right? Patients and payers, the insurance companies, they want reliable systems demonstrated to guarantee added value and safety. We also want quality assurance and implementation of good pharmacy practice according to the FIP, right? The international pharmaceutical body. What happens is that we need to go to accreditations. So when you do your courses and when you do your specialties, you become accredited. The pharmacy that you work at can be accredited as a the, um, MTM pharmacy, for example. The pharmacy can be as, as a um, nuclear pharmacy, as a pharmacist um, consulting geriatrics. There was an article by Dr. L.D. Meyer recently where she's saying that elderly patients are still having problems keeping up with their medications. They are forgetting their medications. Some of them live alone, they don't have anyone. This is an area where pharmacists can get involved. We can go out into the communities and look for these patients and help them in, in some real tangible ways. All right? So I know as a, any profession, the professional body is key to development. Leadership, Pharmaceutical Society of Jamaica, leadership is critical. We must have leaders who will see a vision of the future and draw others to that and encourage others, right? And each one of you, each one of you, do you have a vision? for your pharmacy practice. Let me see a show of hands, those of you who have a clear vision of what you want to become as a pharmacist. You didn't hear the question. I want to see, where are the millennials? Stand up millennials, stand up millennials. If you're born after 1980, stand up. Stand up. Okay. All you want money, right? How are you going to make the money? Do you have a vision of how you are going to accomplish what you want? Okay. So keep that vision. Write the vision. Keep it close. Get a vision board. And every year, you say, this is what, you know what I used to do? I used to write out a list of things. And as I get it, I would tick it off. You may sit now. You tick it off, so you must have. And the society, what the society is here for is to help to guide that vision. So we need training and mentoring. We don't come to CEs. 
We don't come to continue in education. We have to have a vision of what we want. So we choose the C's and the, the education, the workshops that will fulfill and enhance and promote that vision, right? The society is here for advocacy. When something is going wrong, we need to say, listen, it needs to help. And that is why we push so hard for MTM. Give Mr. Anderson another round of applause, man. Right? Policy direction. Where do we want to go? Right? Are we, are we going to have um, the law that would adjust so that we, as when we start doing our patient-focused practices, we can ask for a lab report or we can ask for um, things to be done. We need the policy in place to support us, the laws and regulations, right? So that is the function of the society, and that is why I need all of you to become active in any little way in supporting your association. It is key. And so the World Health and WHO and FIP has this term called seven plus star pharmacists. But in Jamaica, what we call them? Brand pharmacists. You never hear about the brand pharmacists? You never hear about the brand pharmacists? We have no brand pharmacists in Jamaica? Yes, where is Chavez? Oh, okay. I think I'm a brand pharmacist. I think I'm a brand pharmacist. Any of you think you're a brand pharmacist? Put up your hand, man. Okay, so what is a brand pharmacist? We are caregivers, we are decision makers, we are innovators, we are communicators, we are managers, we are lifelong learners, we are researchers, we are leaders, and we are teachers. So the practice of a brand pharmacist means that we do, as caregivers, we concentrate on specific areas. So we are geriatric care, MTM. We look for solutions. We don't complain. We look for solutions. We use technology to advance our purpose. We are lifelong learners. Now, Mr. Anderson mentioned um, co continuing action. Well, we, the World Health Organization and FIP calls it continuing professional development. And your association has submitted to the Pharmacy Council a plan of action for the introduction of CPDs to Jamaica to assist us so that we can become more patient focused. Research is important. We, when they try to get information of what is happening, there's a, a void of information. And it is necessary to have research in order to prove your point and to be paid for it, okay? Leaders, we're developing and we are initiating. Communicators, start doing podcasting, do your publications, change your practice, right? To fall in line with the new look pharmacy. So as I say, we press forward. Pharmacists have always been leading the charge to shape the future of pharmacy, and we are not going to give up that. We are going to continue to lead the charge, to move ahead, okay? Health influencers. We are preventative medicines. We are, we are doing green pharmacy. We are educators. We go for follow-up and support, and we're looking for environmentally safe, disposal of medicines. Environmental impact on what we do is important. And just now, there's a meeting called to look at the management, safe management, safe disposal of medicines, right? medicine waste. In, in um, England, they have changed the bottling, so the packaging, and that's another way that pharmacists can become entrepreneurs. We can come up with ways, green, safe, environmentally safe ways of, this, of packaging our um, products. And of course, we are back where we started, designer drugs compounding. So compounding is part of our future, just as it was a part of our past. So I'd just like to say, Perch where the wind comes at you full force. Let it blow you apart till your feathers fly out and you look like hell. 
then abandon yourself. The wind is not your enemy. Nothing in life is your enemy. Go where the wind takes you, higher, lower, backwards. The wind to carry you forward will find you when you are ready, when you can bear it. You never truly arrive at the destination of a sustainable practice model. To sustain a leading practice, we must constantly improve. Thank you.